Precision Probiotics for Oral Health. How's it going, man? Hey, good. How you doing? Michael. I'm Michael? Yeah. Alan, good to meet hey, you, man. Good to meet you. Cool. What's, meet you. Which one's your company? Uh, Osiris. Osiris. Yeah. And that one is the... Which one? Uh, we're trying to crowdsource uh, first responders for cardiac arrest. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, thanks for coming by and doing this. Yeah, no, no worries. Thanks for building what you're building. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. That's such a smart idea. Just yeah. get a notification. Be like, oh my God, someone's hurt. You know, two minutes away from me. I can exactly. get there faster. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. smart. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. Good stuff. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, so this is Alan Sakin. Hi, um, everyone. He, he, Alan. Alan. Not, not Alan. Yeah. Uh, I keep that very limited. Um, hey, Federico. Oh, yeah. Mike. Mike. Right. Mike. No. no. Brian. 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 Like That's right. Mike. Yeah. Um, but so Brian, Brian from um, which one again? New Age. New Age. New Age. New Age. Yeah. So guys, pork. Um, right. Pork. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'll let you, you will take the stage. Um, so, Alan, we'll give you guys a bit of a background on himself. Um, one thing he came in here today to talk about, and why you guys should listen to Alan, is he's among the best people I've ever seen at like creating new and maintaining relationships um, with people who are doing very interesting, high-level things. I know nothing, so, but thank you. Alan is a sponge, and also brings together like a really huge network of people who are deep thinkers in science, technology, entrepreneurship, and beyond. So. Today he's kind of talking about how to reach out and build these connections. Um, so it is a very soft skill driven kind of thing, but it's yeah. very important for all your companies finding people who are champions and advisors and all that. So I'll let you give more of a background and then uh, Thanks, Alex. take it away. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, that was extremely kind. I, I, I know nothing and I'm just trying to do my best to build a bright future, as are you guys. You guys know the hard stuff, the biology, the code of life, right? That's tough stuff. And I appreciate you guys so much for taking this risk. Speak up. speak up even louder. All right, I'll speak up even louder. Okay. All right, let's see here. Let's try this. All right, can you hear me better now? All right, let's go with this volume then. Okay. So you guys already took the first risk. So this is about building high profile connections to maximize the success of what you are working on. So you already took the first risk. Look at all of you here. How many of you could have easily been like, I don't wanna be an entrepreneur? All of you. And you chose to be an entrepreneur and you chose to pursue this crazy roller coaster ride of building something of high value into the world. All right, so now you're on, this, you're on the roller coaster, you're moving forward. How do you accelerate your success? How do you succeed most optimally with maximal intention of catalyzing significant impact, not just small impact or medium impact, but maximal impact. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I'm gonna try and keep this interactive. So actually, if at any point you guys wanna chime in, just raise your hand and chime in, okay? Can we get on a conversational page, yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool, all right, good. Good to hear, good to hear your voices. All right. So. Uh, I host a show called Simulation. We feature scientists, entrepreneurs, technologists, educators, all different types of people. Everything from blockchain and AI to biotech to neuroscience to geopolitics, emotional intelligence, all this type of stuff. And why we do it is because we know that the public intellectual needs to be rebirthed and we need to inspire the next generations to build the future. So it's time to focus more on science, technology, entrepreneurship. Let's get that rolling in our world. So the first big point is risk risk you're already here you came here today so now the next step is how do you get to that high profile connection that you really want to talk to whether that be an investor that be somebody that wants to partner up with you that's somebody that wants to buy a lot of what you're making how do you go out and reach out to that person build a good relationship with them and we'll unpack that but taking the risk is the first step you have to you have to admit to yourself that i know nothing and i'm gonna go and fall on my face a bunch of times along the way and be totally okay with that process does that sound familiar the falling on your face along the way the struggle yeah because we that's that's this whole roller coaster ride we got to become more and more adaptive to the failures and reintegrate them along the way so we've already mentioned this you're here you already took the first risk so the next big thing is finding who your superstars are how many of you know your top three or top five candidates that you want of your really high profile connections for investment or for sales how many of you already have those outlined so one team out of the teams has that outline. So your first piece of advice and homework is to tonight go home and start, or even in 
45 minutes when you go back and sit down. Just go and write down in a note, write down your top people that would catalyze your success tremendously. That means advisors, people that would buy a lot of your product, partnerships, etc. Go and do that. Does that make sense as a first piece of advice? Okay, we got like, we got like 60% of heads nodding. What about the other 40, yes? yes. <laughs> okay, all right, so go and make that list. That list is first key, first point. The next part of the list is gonna be how to, the next part is how to approach them. We're gonna talk about the tactics as well. We gotta be okay with failure. We know that it's going to end up happening no matter what. We're gonna stumble, fall on our face, but we're gonna reintegrate what we learn back into our practice and we're gonna become better. Do we already feel ourselves becoming better at what we do? How, what, one week ago, one month ago even, we weren't as good as we are today at what we do, right? So we're slowly growing and becoming better, which means that you reach out to one of these high profile connections, they might not respond, but that's not going to hold us back from being persistent. That's a major key here is being persistent, reaching back out again maybe after two weeks and saying, hey, how is this door? Is this, do, you, do you wanna talk? Are you interested at all? I'd love to help in some way. And we'll talk about, this is, this is weird. This comes out of left field. You're like, gene expression. What does that have anything to do with a building high profile connections. So this is actually takes a, a, a different look at what we've been talking about. On one side, we're talking about turning on the expressions to the high profile connections. I also wanna make it clear that we're gonna be turning off the expressions to less important connections. I have a big head nodding going on here. You're like, I know. Yeah. You're like, I know. You can waste a lot of time and get distracted. You can waste a lot of time and get distracted. So knowing who to slow down talking to is equally as important as who you should be talking to, okay? So maybe within this list, let's, let's actually assign this as a piece of homework as well, that write down the top five people that we need to reach out to for superstars, but also the top five people that we need to spend a little bit less time talking to so we can focus our time on the bigger picture, on the vision, on the execution, on the strong connections that we need to build. Yeah, sound good? I know it can be tough, right? Because it, it's emotionally, it hurts to say that I, I have to not talk, I have to not respond, but people get it. People get it over time. I'm sorry, I'm really focused, I'm really heads down. Be very kind about it. And then just don't respond. <laughs> you guys are still... <laughs> yeah, it's tough, but we gotta we got, we got do that. That's a good way to stay focused. And write that down, write that down as well. Who do we not talk to? As well as who do we talk to? So continue taking these risks. You're already here. Now it's time to talk to the bigger connections. Go and take the risk. Okay, part two is these tactics. So now you know, okay, Alan, I know I need to go and take the risk. How do I take the risk? What is our best procedure for taking these risks? Well, the first step is friendship first. So I'm not coming in there, what, what was your name? I'm David. David, David, awesome. So I'm not coming into an email with David and saying, hey David, do you wanna invest in my company? That, that will work very, very small percentage of time. It's more often something like, hey David, I like what you're building. I like what you're working on. How can I be of help? Can we take a meeting to chat? And so in that, in, from that perspective, what you're doing is you're coming in, you know that, this, that the person, David, is a superstar and you wanna talk to David, but you're not immediately saying, this is how you can help me. You're saying, how can I help you? How can we be friends first? So you go and you take this meeting and a bunch of people are gonna tell you no, but then sometimes people are gonna tell you yes. When you sit down with them, you wanna really get to know them. You wanna to get to know them. Why are you building what you're building? Why do you care about this? Why do you care about this endeavor you're pursuing in biotech? Tell me more about yourself, why you care about it. How can I be of help? I know some scientists, some entrepreneurs, maybe, maybe there's some ways that I can help you. And then the idea of, this is the whole asking questions and helping them. Over time, you're actually going to realize that you're gonna be asking them questions and they're gonna be giving you advice. You're, you're gonna be asking them questions like, oh, how did, you, how did you end up raising money? You're asking them a question. They're teaching you how they raised money. You're learning about how they raised money. How did you strike that partnership with X company? 
Oh, you did it this way. They're teaching you again. You're getting advice and you're staying humble. And having an awareness of reciprocation is David going and asking me afterward. He's like, oh, now, like, what do you need? Because if, if they're not asking you what you need in this meeting, then typically that means that they're not expressing as much interest, but we still have to know what our ask is and take that risk with them. Meaning we're still going to either at the end of that meeting or at the end of another meeting down the line, we still want to put, we still want to gently nudge in the direction of what we need in order for us to grow, which is if I've been learning about how to strike up this partnership or how to raise money, that I will, I will go and make, make it clear that um, I'm currently in the process of also uh, striking up a really important partnership. Um, you know, are you actually connected to anybody that could help out with that? So even a simple ask like that, oh, actually I might be, or I'm not. And then slowly you're opening up more doors, and as you open up more doors, more doors open up. But you've got to be willing to take the risk and be tactful along the way in order to maximize the success of what you're doing. People are going to tell you no, you've got to follow up. Persistence is a huge key in this game. People are not going to reply. How, how often, you know, we were just talking about how often we don't reply to people. When you don't reply to somebody, do they ping you again? Yeah. It happens. And so what, what we see is that we do that same thing to other people, to superstars. If they're not replying to us after a week or after two weeks, just follow up again. Be persistent. You never know when you knock a second time when the door can open. And these are really important doors that will open and catalyze some big success. So in summary, take risks, be tactful, okay? I'm gonna um, walk us through an activity as well. Um, and more engagement and interaction because we still have a bunch of time, but I don't want to sit here and monologue. I want us to engage and interact about what actually are things that are going on with you and how we can be helpful for even observing what this dialogue is going to look like right now. So if you guys want to reach out, I'm open. I'm an open book. Reach out to me, please. I'd love to help out. I love biotech. I love accelerating the success of people that are trying to change the future and also learning from you because I know nothing. I'm trying to learn a lot more about biotech. So reach out. Um, do you guys have questions for me before I engage with you? No? Any questions that come to mind? Well, uh, yeah. how to make that initial contact. If someone's just on your list, what are the different ways to, to actually Say yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So, okay, so now we have our list of five superstars and we have our list of five people that we need to talk to less. We've made this list, the list is very clear. Now we need to make action. So on the side of superstars, a really, a really interesting way that we, we typically don't even think that, that this is even a possibility, but the warmer the connection, the better it is. And we don't even know who we're connected to in our network. Our node, our, our network extensions, they're like the roots of a tree, of like a massive rainforest. We don't even know who we're connected to until you go and you start looking on your Facebook, looking on your LinkedIn, and you start exploring the connection networks. All of a sudden you realize that you have a friend that's already connected to that person. So you already have a warm intro to them. We didn't even know that we did. So go and look on LinkedIn, find who, the, who a first connection to them is, or a Facebook friend is, and then seriously, just go to their profile, find their mutual friends, and then you see, oh crap, like Paul's a mutual friend or Sally's a mutual friend, great. Message Sally, ask, hey Sally, will you please introduce me to David? And then at that point, then Sally will make a quick introduction to David and you have to send her a sentence. You have to make these things easy. For warm intros, make it easy. Meaning send her a sentence about your company. One, one sentence, really easy you know, Osiris, right? So for Osiris, you know how to pitch this much better than I do, but uh, uh, making emergency response more effective. And just really simple stuff with a link to your website. And, and, and then Sally will copy and paste that in, into the intro to David. Okay, so making it really easy for these warm connections. I'm gonna hit that, I'm gonna hit that in just a second, because that was warm, right? Now you're like, okay, how the hell do I do cold intros? Because a lot of these people, these superstars, we don't even know we, we don't know, they're, they're actually disconnected from us by quite a bunch of tree networks that we don't even, that we're not near. So, okay. So for, for colder intros, it's, there's, there's a lot of different software that enables you to pull people's email, 
right now from the internet. There's uh, different plugins like Contact Out is really good. Um, there's a couple other ones that are really good at this, but um, Rocket Reach, there's all these that are just super good at this. But what, what you do is you just literally copy and paste their LinkedIn. Um, you just go to their LinkedIn, use the plugin, and then you copy and paste their email that populates. And you can send them a direct email, unless you can find it online. Sometimes people list it on their LinkedIn. Sometimes they list it on blogs that they've written. So just a Google search of, of David, what's your last name? Sang. Sa Sang? Same. Same? Like, pronounce it like S-A-Y. Say. David Say and then email address on Google search. David Say email address. You'll be surprised at how often it'll populate on Google search. Then you can get their email and reach out to them cold. Now the message body for when you reach out to them cold, again, very short. How many of us get five paragraph emails and we're like, fuck, that's overwhelming? Yeah? Okay, how many of us get like two sentence emails and we're like, oh, I can respond right away, right? Two sentence email, hey David, love your work. I'd love to see how I can help out. You wanna take a quick tea on Wednesday at noon? That's it, super simple, just like that. What and you, you can, the, oh, when you go meet them? No, like it's cold, it's cold mail, right? Yep. Uh, two sentences, where is it? Love your work, be fan of your work, I'd like to help, how, how can I do that? Yep. But then the other person's like, who the fuck is this? Exactly, so this, <laughs> that's perfect. Who the fuck is this, exactly, exactly. So, you know, hey David, love your work. Um, I would love to help out. I'm building Osiris, advancing emergency response with Link. And then um, would love to meet for tea Wednesday noon. Does that work for you? You know, so, so literally it's, it's almost like, yeah, it's almost like two sentence with the space in between what you can, what you wanna do. You first say, I wanna help. And then you say, this is what I'm building. Not saying, not saying, invest in my company or provide me with something, but yeah, exactly. But then, they, then they're aware of what you're building too, which you definitely want them to be aware of what you're building as well. Yes. Yeah. So that would be warm and cold for that. Yeah. No, that, no, that actually the question was about cold, so you did it. Awesome. Cool. Let's, yeah, let's keep it as simple as possible and also knock on as many doors as possible. Yeah, what happens with, like, in the example you, you said earlier with uh, finding that Sally person? Yes. Yes. What happens with, like, happens to me that a lot, that Sally person is actually not that a close friend of mine. Totally. So do you, do or not you a close spend time building <laughs> first, like, friendship? That's a, that's, a, that's a great question. So how valuable is that superstar connection to you? Because if the superstar connection is very valuable, then, and then it depends on your relationship with Sally as well, because obviously there's a massive spectrum here. You can be not close at all or be very close to Sally. So then um, how much effort do you want to put into building the relationship with her? Well, I first personally, I don't even take a meeting with Sally. I just DM Sally. And I say, hey Sally, I'd love, I hope you're well. Um, I'd love to connect to Paul Richardson, whatever, um, um, because I think I can help him and he can help me. Exactly, to try to spend, try to spend, try to figure out how to spend 30 seconds on each one of these like outreaches or 60 seconds. If you're spending an hour drafting up an email, we are not doing things right. So. This basically copy and paste. We just, we, just made this, we just made this email. It can literally work, this cold email can work. It's copy and paste. It is. Sally, love your work. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna help out. This is what I'm building into the world. Can you take a meeting at noon next week for tea? And just copy and paste that for, for Paula, for Ricardo, et cetera. Just make sure you change the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> change the name. Change the name and, and, and you know, change the name and, and actually, if you can add a personalization touch, very small one, love what you're building with blank, right? So just add that personalization touch as well. Then they'll be like, okay, they already know what I'm building with my company. So they'll, so they'll see that you're, you've researched them a little bit and you, and you, you know, you want to add those personal touches, the friendship first touches. Yeah. So you go straight for the face-to-face -face as opposed to trying to get a phone call first? That's a great question as well. Um, I personally love interpersonal stuff and I think interpersonal stuff catalyzes totally different energetics than phone call does 
and the energetics from an in-person can typically um, rocket a relationship forward versus phone call, but sometimes people will say, um, if they're in Mountain View and you're up here, yeah, yeah. or if they're in New York, right. yeah, yeah, then phone call, right. yeah. And then on the other side, it's like, uh, you know, someone that I don't know, I feel like I'd be more likely to take a phone call with them first and be like, fuck this person, versus like going out and like, and be like, oh yeah, sure. Tuesday, let's go. Like, yeah. They're gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to just to address that quick, th think about the risk. If you're willing to take the risk of taking that meeting, that you have a higher propensity of opening up a door. Yeah, so yeah. the more that you open up these doors, the more that continue opening. Yeah. So if, if we... Yeah, if, yeah. Establishing some degree of trust at the very beginning. Yes, yeah. exactly. And again, the, remember those two, those two sentences. They're not reversed. Yeah. You're not saying, this is what I'm building. You're yeah. saying, I like what you're doing. I want to help you. This is what I'm doing. You know, it's really important to have that, to have that order down. Yeah. yeah. If someone's offering to help you, you're going to take it more seriously if they're offering to meet you. Yeah, yeah. totally. Especially if they're local in the Bay Area. Anything in the Bay Area, Aim to do in person first. Aim to do in person first. Yeah. So I just uh, have a quick question on follow up emails after sending a cold email to someone you don't know. Yeah. And that person didn't respond. Yep. What, what should be the content of the follow up? Say I'm sending yeah. after a week or 10 days. What should be the content? Can't be the same. Oh, uh, great question. The follow-up email after a cold email hasn't responded. So um, what I'll do is I'll send Alex. Um, I'll send Alex a. Um, the first email, I'll send him the cold email to sentencer, and then you guys, he'll send it to you guys, and then you'll get that, and then you can mess with that, with that template to sentencer. And then I'll send you the week follow-up. So if they don't, if they go cold for a week, you'll see the follow-up. The follow-up is something like, can, hey, hey, hey Paul, it would be like, can, can I, Can I, can I assume that you're not interested in taking a meeting, question mark? That's it. That's it. Super simple, one sentence. Can I assume you're not interested in taking a meeting? And send that off a week later, just like that. And, and um, these are those like, b there's a lot of nuance, but these are, the bin these are like some of the only times you want to be very binary in your life. You just want to like give people the option to say no, but you want to know if they're interested or not. And then like, yeah, and just see if they are or not. And even if they don't respond to that follow-up email, just put it in your calendar to hit them up in two months. I'm serious, you have no idea. Sometimes people will be traveling, they won't even have internet access, and then l think about this. Put yourself in their shoes. They might be on a honeymoon in Hawaii. You had no idea that they were. So the fact that they got back a week later when you sent your second follow-up email and they were parsing their inbox and they were only responding to priority things and then your email didn't get prioritized. Then you email them again a month or two later and they see your email and they go, oh, this company sounds interesting. I want to take this meeting. So it's not like they didn't want to meet you. It might be that they were on a honeymoon or they might have been in Europe or they might have been tra doing other things really busy heads down so you never know so don't don't assume that they're n that they're not interested be persistent be persistent um and you know like wayne gretzky said you miss 100 percent of shots in life you don't take take the risk take the opportunity take those shots knock on those doors yeah was there yeah no where did the other thought come <laughs> May I ask a pr about what it was, ish? Uh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. I mean, I, it's, I'm not being sarcastic, but how can I actually help that person that I'm saying I can help? Like, that's a great question. So, great question. Yes. I, I yes. don't like saying things that I can't deliver upon. Do you know the full potential of how you can help people? No. Because I don't either. Right? I don't either. I'm trying my best to figure that out. Right? We were just talking about this massive network of tree roots. And we don't even know the extent of our own tree roots. 
is so sometimes you can help somebody with a connection. Sometimes you can think of something creatively in that interaction when they're talking about the way that their company is working or the way that they are exploring a partnership or that they got a partnership where you can say, oh, well, did you try this? And they'll go, I didn't think about that. So we, don't, we sometimes don't even know how we can be helpful, but when we get that in-person interaction, it's up to us to be really analytical of, of how things are going and be like, have we tried this? Have we tried that? And, and make it clear that you're interested in, oh, I might have somebody for that, but not in a way that's like, I actually don't, but in a way that's like, I think I can dig something up. I really do. So that's kind of where, where I come from. Did that help? Yeah, I think I would Yeah. I guess I don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah, but you didn't feel comfortable starting a company either, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you move to San Francisco from somewhere? Oh, yeah. Where'd you move from? Boston. Boston. Was it easy decision to move to San Francisco? Uh, I have to question my sanity every day. <laughs> <laughs> We're questioning our sanity every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all, this roller coaster is crazy. And you know, you, you took the risk. It was very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable to start a company because we know that failure is just creeping behind our head all the time. That you're hustling, other people are trying to build things at the same time that are in the same ballpark as you are. So you're basically hustling Trying to, trying to build you know, even quicker. You gotta invest more hours and be a better worker, more efficient than other people are as well, but also still get eight hours of sleep and still meditate, still go to nature, still do all the, all the good stuff along the way as well. But if you already took the opportunity, if you already took this risk and this opportunity to stretch yourself outside of your comfort zone, just maybe say to one out of every two or three people that you think you might be able to help more, say, I think I can help as well, you know? So start with it a little bit and see yeah, where it goes. And it's, only email. <laughs> and it's only email and there's millions of doors. There's millions. So what's worst case scenario? And, and even then, remember, out of the millions, we're still prioritizing the top five and then the top five after that and we're trying to find those top ones. We're turning off the connections to the, to the other doors because we don't, we don't wanna, we wanna focus on the top ones, yeah. I would say, you know, what's the, what's the lowest probability that, what, what's the probability that just randomly you're going to have some way to contribute if you meet them, like five or ten percent at worst, right? And the other person, the superstar, they know how the world works. If they decide to meet you, it's because they're willing to take that bet too, right? Um, I have a question. Good point. Um, so contrary to the Sally example, often I find, oh, I've got like all these mutual connections with the person. But of course, the person who I'm closest to and ask first is like, oh, I don't even really know who that person is, or I'm not sure, I don't know them. Mm -hmm. and, and so how can one effectively actually find like those two links that are sufficiently strong to, to get where you're going? Or, um, yeah, so there, it, there's, there's a couple things here. One, one of the things that I think is really interesting about what you're saying is that we might invest so much of our time into trying to figure out those tree root branches and follow them to the connection when a cold email over the top might have actually gotten us the meeting faster. Mm -hmm. So, so we, 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 gotta, we gotta be really careful with our time. It's the most valuable thing. So we gotta figure out how to be most efficient with things. And in the case of your, tr if you are trying to follow the, the, the root system to the connection, then the path of least resistance first, and then follow that first, try. If no, follow the second path of least resistance, try that. Um, yeah, yeah. But do it sequentially. Sequentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just be, yeah, be, be aware that, um, you know, actually sometimes I will blast four people or five people with the same message asking them to, to connect me with someone, and you know, even if, if one of them gets back to you, that's great. Sometimes two or three might get back to you and they might, maybe, maybe two of them make an intro email. Great, then that person's like, okay, 
wait a second, I got two <laughs> intro emails to this person. Like, there might be a reason why I should meet with them. Informal as well, at the same time. <laughs> oh, in, informal about the, the, no, no, FOMO. Oh, FOMO, like, fear, fear of missing out. Missing out. Yeah. F FOMO uh, for, th for the, yeah. That last connection. Yes. So, yeah. Two or three people are talking to me about this guy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> who the fuck is he? Yeah, who the fuck is he? Versus like, oh, look, there's so many people telling me about it. So the sequential thing, it, 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 it's the safe way to go, but, in, but it's also like, how safe do you want to be? You, you started a fucking company. You want to take risks. So just take the risk, maybe blast out three, five. If you really want to be aggressive, blast out 10 to the 10 mutual connections that you know and just see who says yes. Zero of them might say yes. And then you gotta blast 10 more. So it's, yeah. It kind of sounds like a dating scene. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at who you're sitting next to. That's your co-founder, right? Yeah. Are you married, basically? No. But it's, it's pretty damn close, though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a dating scene, yeah. Uh, do you have another thought about it? I just wanted to say that. Well, I'm just saying, it's like, you always say, how can I help? You really, you know, you're trying not to be desperate, you're trying to be, you know, not, not give up the bike. You can't go directly and say, I want, you know. Yes, <laughs> it's correct. It's not like beating around the bush. Show me yeah. the money. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, yeah. You don't just walk up to a bar and be like, let's have sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't go that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, how can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> it works all the time. <laughs> works all the time. <laughs> Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like the dating comparison. That's that's a good one too. Yeah, exactly. And you 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 know, like when you are in search of somebody in terms of like f you know physical, emotional, mental attraction, what do you, what do you do? You 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 know you play. You know you play. You 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 vibe with them, right? You don't. You know we don't just do that whole approach. We do. You know we do a different approach. So it's totally like that. Yeah. So I don't know. If this is a common experience, but in my experience has been like so the superstars, like the ones are you know Jeff Bezos and whoever, like they're you know obviously the superstars, and like you know someone that knows them. And they, the gate to get to them is very high, and they hold that connect, that card very close to their chest. Yeah, it's going to take a long time for them to be comfortable enough with you to even make that introduction. Yeah. So, like, you know, just establishing the friendship, establishing the trust, like, there's got to be a trade-off there, right? So, like, any tricks on, like, okay, you think that's a superstar that you need to get to, but maybe you. Even when you get there, it's been a total waste of time because it wasn't the right pathway you should have gone down in the first place. But you had some you know, crazy thought that, that was the answer. Yeah. It actually, never was. Yeah. So like, how do you? How, when do you know when to pump the brakes and realize? Yeah, that that's good. This is this like obviously you can hedge and try and get try and get something else and hoping for that you know massive connection. Yeah, like, that's when good. When do you know when to pump the brakes and just Afford the mission, like yeah. You know, even when you get to the destination, it may not be what you think it's going to be. Yeah, that's good. Um, reciprocation is a crucial um, uh, variable to analyze for breaks. If there is not as so much reciprocation, then we usually uh, slow down a bit. Um, but the superstar. So maybe maybe we look at it in a superstar, and then I guess a richest person on the planet yeah supernova, yeah. Big yeah. Big yeah 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 <laughs> so, the big bang yeah yeah, yeah. so it, so um if so if we if we if we take a look at the big bang or the or the supernova if we take a look at the big bang and we look at you know the connection network to the big bang there is there's like quite a lot of connections but those people especially don't like being asked for shit um, so it's, there's only a couple big bangs, but there's a shitload of superstars, a lot of superstars. So the, 
you'll actually have a higher propensity and a higher amount of doors to superstars and also to, you don't wanna risk failure to the supernova or the Big Bang, but you, you're fine with risking failure to just the superstar because there's another million superstars. So, um, so it's not, so yeah, totally keep nurturing and fostering the connections to the Big Bangs, but also um, the step below that, those, those superstars, um, you can pump the brakes when, it, when, when things like re reciprocation, when it's not happening, then you can pump the brakes there. Or maybe another time to pump the brakes is, you've had that meeting, you've, you've noticed that the value, because you want to, you want to, you want to focus more on the execution of your business than on taking all of these meetings that only a small percentage of them are going to succeed. So you want to really be careful with your time in terms of taking only the highest value meetings and then also knowing when a second meeting is worth it versus not worth it. So then it's up to you to analyze how that went, that interaction went, about how you can help them, how they can help you. And if, if it didn't um, pan out as well as it should have in your thoughts, then definitely pump the brakes and explore other ones as well. Yeah. I would like to add, first of all, is I don't know Chef Bezos. Uh, but, uh, what was it, Chef, Chef, what was yeah. that? Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. I know him, but the, in Argentina, the ecosystem is quite small, and so the people that are part of that ecosystem, they also are super jealous of the introductions, mm -hmm. and who they play their uh, uh, history record upon, when I present you, I present it myself through another person. So for me, it's been really helpful to be to make it a, a, a really good habit to respect the trust that someone has gave you by introducing someone. So in that way, it's you build your own profile of not letting down people that have introduced you to someone else, and that can make them make the extra mile, extra mile of, of playing that uh, that their persona into you to make an intro. It can sound basic, but sometimes if we have an intro, we don't respect that, and people on the other side are like, dude, I had three cards to play with this guy, and I choose you, and you let me hack it. And that can, that can go fast to a really small environment, that I believe that people that are high, really, really super close to supernovas, they also think that way. They will talk to each other and say, oh. Exactly. It's the network effect. So if you go out and send a bunch of cold messages and warm messages trying to get to your superstars, all of a sudden people will be like, well, why did I see, you saw, you know David too? Yeah, he reached out to me like a month ago and all of a sudden they know about you. They were, they were talking amongst each other and they know about you only because you reached out to them. Even though both of them might have saw your message and didn't take meetings with you, they still know of you. They still might have went to your website and your LinkedIn and looked at stuff. So this is important because you're planting seeds. And these seeds will get watered over time by different connections and they'll see more of your success. Then all of a sudden they'll reach out to you for the meeting. So you water over time, um, planting the seeds across the networks. Um, also making introductions for other people as well, building that trusted connection over time. So that way, if you see dots connecting in your network, take the, take the three minutes to just link both of their profiles. Sally, Paul, um, I really want to introduce you guys. Uh, I'm, I think there's a lot of synergy. Uh, let me know how exploring goes. Again, two sentence email. You've linked both of their names to their websites or their LinkedIn's and you've launched off that email. Then. Um, Paul and Paul, Sally and David, whoever I said, end up getting the um, meeting together possibly, possibly not. But then again, um, you're acting as a connecting node. You're building trust with people um, over time. You're building your brand. Your brand is yourself. You are your brand. So the more that you can get your name out there and spend little bits of time getting your name out there through things like having this template. Alex, I'm gonna send you the, the template um, yeah, I'm going to send you the template and the follow-up, and then you blast it off to them. Yes? If you're the introduction maker, what do you think about the double opt-in introduction? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've, I've, I've gotten feedback before about how risky I am with that, and um, it, 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 certain people have, have made it clear that they prefer that. Okay, so if you, if, if you want to achieve greatness, 
ask for forgiveness, not for permission. So usually what I do is I go and take the risk and then without the double opt-ins and then one out of every couple dozen people will email and say, hey, like I prefer double opt-ins from here on out. And then you just need to take a mental note that they prefer double opt-ins, opt-in intros. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I have one comment on that. Yep. I generally do double opt-ins. I have occasionally, especially during time crunches, if someone's visiting, not done that. And I've gotten called out on it before as well. Um, one thing that changes that dynamic is if someone's like, hey, you don't normally do, you normally do a double opt-in, you did here. I come back with like, well, there's a time crunch and I thought you guys had overlaps with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. If that's not the case, sorry about it. You can apologize, but like showing you were thoughtful in that. That yeah. You thought this is a valuable connection for them. You can be wrong, but when people think that you're doing carelessly and spamming, it's very different than if you're careful. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a great point. And also, um, just another touch point on that is um, think about how much extra time it takes to email two people with those links to the opposite person's profile. Wait for both of them to come back to you. Maybe one comes back, the other one takes another couple of days. It's just cluttering you. It's cluttering you. It's way better to just ask for forgiveness if it doesn't work out and just continue um, going about being a connector. Usually you'd be surprised at how often you think that two people should synergize and then they do and then they thank you for it. So you'd be surprised. Um, again, a lot of us don't know our full potential. I don't. Everybody really doesn't. And when we fi start figuring things out, we, we get to know the roots of our trees and how they connect to other roots of trees and how to maximize, again, our superstars, the people that we need to turn connections onto, turn connections off to. We start figuring ourselves out better. Um, this is going to be the craziest roller coaster ride of your lives, and it's the best thing that you'll ever do. And it can be tough sometimes when you wake up in the morning and you're just like, ah, there's so much to do. But every day you'll get more and more meaning that you accrue in your life by building this, by building this and by impacting people. When you get those first messages from people that say like, thank you so much for what you built. It's helped me in this way. That, you know, the way that that rings in your heart, just hold on to those moments. Revisit them. Revisit them like once a month and once every week or even every morning. Just go and revisit them. Be like, what I'm building is important. And remind yourself of that and hustle it out. It'll be the best thing you ever do. And reach out to those superstars. Make it happen. Yeah. So I, so I got it. So take the risk, reach out, and uh, hopefully you will have something. But what is the big no-no? Like, uh, it actually hurts you. I mean, what, what, what yeah. are the things you, you want to avoid by doing this? Yeah. So, uh, so I have some, n not big bangs, but supernova. So let's say big bang, supernova, and then superstars, let's mm -hmm. say, okay? So I've had some supernovas, kind of like that middle tier, that have, I fell on my face, and they kind of made their walls a little higher for me, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel good. It hurts. But there's also some people that are supernova that I did the same thing for that, you know, put their walls down and said, huh, okay, come in. So, so even though there are going to be times that people are going to say, like you're wondering about the signals, right? What signals they give for you to know that it's a no? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, probably after that third, e the third, maybe third cold email, send the first one, send the second one a week later, and then you send the third one maybe a month or two months later. If there's no reply, then probably not interested. So um, also, um, but you can still reach back out in like six or nine months, I'm serious. You can still, <laughs> still reach back out. Um, so would that yeah. offend them? If you did a fourth one in like six or nine months? Mm -hmm. um, a very, very small percentage of people might be offended, but what, you know, you, you gotta be willing to risk to offend people to pursue execution of your goals and your vision. Yeah, yeah. 
because there's going to be just a very small people that are like, oh, I can't believe that he's emailing me a fourth time. Very small percentage of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they won't even remember after nine months. They'll be like, oh, it's a fresh email. Yeah. For emails, maybe it's just a lot. Like, how would it look like? You know, like, hey, I just wanted to be really, really, really sure that you're not interested. Yeah, yeah, on the fourth email. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, they said sure. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. After the second one where you say, hey, I just want to make sure that you're not interested in taking this meeting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like, like, hey, Katie. Um, what? Yeah, 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 what the fuck? Maybe you're throwing in a little update. Yeah, that's a good one. Perfect, exactly. See, you guys are smart. You guys can figure this out even better than I can. Just keep brainstorming and working together amongst you um, to figure this out. That, that kind of stuff's great. Hey, Katie, um, just closed this cool partnership. Um, wondering how you're doing. You still interested in that meeting? That might be the month, email a month down the line or whatever, but. Yeah, sometimes, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but uh, when you're trying to reach superstars, uh, they may be getting like a hundred emails per day. So it's just that you, when, when they open their inbox, inboxes, they, your email wasn't on top. Sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's just about- Totally true. Nailing the exact moment. Just it's luck. true. Yeah, exactly. They, some people work on their email at three in the morning. You ever send an email at three in the morning, they respond right away, you're like, what the? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, so like what she was, she was saying, uh, I questioned my sanity every day, which is yeah. everybody here does. Mm -hmm. But something uh, very good, it would be like, don't even question your sanity. Assume that you are crazy. <laughs> but luckily, but luckily the, the person you're trying to reach, it might be crazy as you are because exactly. you're in the same environment. Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, no, it's like Elon Musk, which is like a supernova semi god, mini god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he started like, like, like he's, uh, he, he, he might be crazy, but he's not checking their emails at 3 a.m. Think about, think about how crazy we all are. We all see the status quo of civilization. We see how it's shaped, how it's formed, how it's run, and we just think, I want to make it better. The other people that you're reaching out to also think, I want to make it better. Yeah, so you're, we're all crazy here. That's why we all took this risk. The not crazy people are the ones that just choose to live in the, in the civilization the way it's designed for them. And the ones that want to redesign it to make it better are the crazy ones. And that's good. Crazy doesn't have to be a bad thing. Crazy is a great thing sometimes. So really um, embody that feeling. That's a good, that's a good feeling. Um, it's good. It's been great conversation. I'm glad you guys have been engaging and interacting as much as you have. It's been good. Other thoughts from people? Any other thoughts? I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking about your like, I'm thinking about your lists. Like, will you guys go and and make that list of superstars? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get get the list of superstars. Now, it's not just five superstars for one month, and then you're like, uh, no, it's like five, and then you reach out to them, and then you're like, oh, I finished that in an hour. Who are the next five? It's about going and pushing and being persistent and trying to get as much of the superstars covered as possible. Again, remember, every time you send an email, it just goes and communicates that signal down the the rainforest tree root system. So if you're sending 100 to, to 100 of these superstars over the period of a month, it's way more likely that two of them will connect and be like, did you get that email about that company that I really liked? Yeah, I didn't go meet with them, but et cetera. So you're much more likely to create the network effect if you go and hustle out more of this. <clears throat> okay, so make that list, the superstar list, but also don't forget about the opposite which is focus, focus. So turn off expressions to the people that are not helping you achieve what you're fo focused on. 
you know, I don't, I don't, sometimes I don't like using this term, but it's kind of like energy vampires. You guys aware of that? Heard of that? Like, it's, it's, it's just a lot of people like to, like to talk to people that are emotionally intelligent because then they'll, you know, you'll reply to them and you'll be caring for them and they'll keep reaching out to you because you care a lot about them and they'll keep reaching out and all of a sudden you're in hour long conversations with them. And that, that, that can be a lot. And it's, a lot of people are better suited. They literally work in psychology or sociology and they understand humans um, even better. And so it's almost better off to, to have other professionals work with them and let you take that hour to focus more on your superstar connections. So, um, that's, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a, it's a very emotionally tying thing. We feel emotionally tied to those connections, but it's equally as important to turn those off and to focus time. You guys care a lot about time, right? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Because focusing time is one of the most important takeaways as well. Focus, 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 focus. Do you guys, do you guys go long periods of time without, with your phone on silent? Okay, it's like five of you. Do any of you? No, silence. I have it in silence every all, all day. You do. All day long. Yeah. And I want that, that's Good. Why I miss all calls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you call them back because you're on your time. You're not on someone else's time. So it's true that maybe one of the superstars you can make a setting on your phone. Say that okay, if Sally calls, um, Sally is a favorite. And if Sally's a favorite, then she can break through your silence if she calls. Something like that. You can mess with the settings and figure that out. But generally speaking, to be able to focus on one thing at a time, your science, your business development, your whatever it may be, focus on that one thing for an extended period of time of maybe an hour or a couple hours, and then go back to email and then do it. Because task switching is very difficult. It takes a lot of cognitive resources and also our brains are just not able to dedicate 100% to two things at the same time. So I'm sure we've all noticed that The Distracted Mind by Adam Gazelli is a very good book for this. And it'll just, it'll change the way you think about the way we use those devices and the way we use our computers. So, um, you know, one task at a time, really go hard on it, really finish that up. Um, David, what's our time right now? So seven minutes after. After one? After two. We started at one, that's right. Wait, Alex, did you say we had until two, right? So it's time over? Uh, in theory, someone, if the immigration lawyers are coming, I don't know if they are, but it's June's running out So. Oh, oh, is the guy in the blue shirt in the lab with June, maybe? Oh, that might be it, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, break then. Thank you, everybody. Please reach out, talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. We can't be of any help. Build our future. You guys are the future. Build it. Build awesome, it. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. Thank What's thank your name? You. I'm Mo. Mo? Yeah. Good to I'm meet you. Oh, you do? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah.